yeah, so if you could talk about spermidine, uh, just int introduce that, that would be really interesting as well. Yeah, so spermidine uh, is another natural product. Uh, it's produced in the body. You can get it through the diet. It goes down with age. Um, and it was really developed by other researchers, um, Frank Medeo, uh, Guido Kramer, and others, who've shown that it activates autophagy in the body. Uh, and we would never played with it. One of the things I do in my lab a lot, especially with natural products, is try to validate some of the things that are out there in the literature and get a feel for working with it in animal models before we start testing it in humans. Um, some things we're not so good at validating, <laughs> but spermidine uh, looks like it's the real deal, at least in our hands. So we can, we see a, a lifespan extension with it, although we only did a few mice for survival, so it's not well powered, but our data is consistent with the data in the literature. Uh, and we found that it's very protective for mice on a high fat diet. So that's um, exciting when you consider that many people are eating unhealthy high fat diets. Uh, and uh, uh, the, a molecule like this may be more beneficial, at least metabolically, for people with unhealthy diets and unhealthy lifestyles than people that are exercising a lot. So um, that's just speculation. But, but our data suggests spermidine is may be efficacious. Uh, and uh, that's, I think that's on the market as well. You can get that. Could you talk a little bit about uh, how you got introduced to spermidine and, and what you see spermidine, what do you see as the good points of spermidine? I actually found, found out about spermidine um, through research many years ago. And again, it was sort of researching the cell. <laughs> and when we look at a piece of aging, this whole, as and a lot of your listeners are familiar with this whole concept of what we call autophagy. And autophagy is getting rid of damaged cells. And we have to get rid of damaged cells to heal and recover. As we age, we get more and more and more and more damaged cells, or what we call senescent cells. Senescent cells are cells that are designed, they're basically, the so cells age, they start getting filled more and more and more with trash and damage. And at some point, they're designed to kill themselves, recycle the good parts, and get rid of the bad parts and go away. If they don't. They stick around. I like to call them the zombie cells because they actually spew out proteins and they actually damage the cells around them. So senescent cells will create more senescent cells, will create more senescent cells. So part of longevity is getting rid of the damage. And spermidine is an autophagy-inducing agent. Fasting is as well. So spermidine is a fasting mimetic in that it actually gets rid of these damaged cells. And particularly, it seems to work well with mitochondria. So my, you get what's called mitophagy, you get rid of damaged mitochondria. So spermidine, if we talk about that whole mitochondrial biogenesis, right? I, I, I want to make new mitochondria, but I got to get rid of the old guys. The, the, the sick old guys are not doing any good. They're taking up space. They're utilizing research, resources. So I got to get rid of them. So spermidine is a really nice option for that. It has its best benefit for autophagy by using a high dose. So I like to do a high dose periodically, like let's say four times a year, you do a high dose, like six milligrams for 30 days. And then you can use a maintenance dose just on a regular ongoing basis, which has more of a just keeping things level, but not a big sort of die off. So it's kind of like cleaning house. Every now and then you got to clean out everything, right? Clean out, spring clean, and then you got to keep everything okay. But even if you're keeping everything okay, eventually you got to go back and spring clean. So that's sort of the concept of using spermidine at a high dose periodically and a lower maintenance dose. So it's a, you know, we talk about the peptides and everything being, you know, they're, they're sort of rebuild. You got to get rid of damage. And that's why I really like spermidine. So when you're doing this high dose period, do you uh, combine it with fasting or, or perhaps lower calories? Interestingly, when they did a study on fasting, in mice, if they blocked spermidine, so we all make spermidine, it's a polyamine, we get it in our diets, we just get in low amounts, we don't get a lot of it, and then our liver makes them. So, so we, we do have spermidine in it. If they took mice and they had no spermidine, so they blocked all their spermidine, and they did fasting, there was no autophagy, there was no beneficial effects. So spermidine appears to be a critical piece of making fasting really work for autophagy. 
So indeed, you should do it if you're going to fast. So can yeah. you can you introduce uh, spermidine? Sure, absolutely. Um, spermidine is a fascinating molecule. Um, we all carry it in our body. It's natural. And the interesting thing is the older we get, the less spermidine we have in our natural deposit. Mm -hmm. And in 2009, Professor Madeo discovered that spermidine can induce or trigger a process called autophagy. I'm sure you know autophagy, but let's put it different. When I talk about autophagy, I always reference to cellular renewal or cellular recycling cleaning which is crucial for our health, mm. to be honest. And as you know, science is some form of debate, right? And in case of autophagy, I don't think that you will find a scientist or a doctor that disagrees um, with the importance of autophagy because it's so essential to life. Even in 2016, if I'm not mistaken, the Nobel Prize was awarded to a Japanese researcher for the explanation of autophagy. Now, I'll Autophagy is usually triggered by fasting, right? That's why, for example, intermittent fasting is such a global trend. Mm -hmm. With spermidine, we can mimic some of the benefits of fasting while eating. Basically, we can say that we cheat our body into thinking we fast so that our body activates this renewal and cleaning process called autophagy. When it comes to the health benefits, um, we cannot fully assess them yet. There are countless clinical studies on autophagy. And what we are doing now is basically we try to replicate them with spermidine. Please remember that um, the science around spermidine is relatively young. We've only been researching the substance for 10 years. And since 2009, 2009 I think roughly 100 international research teams joined the research on spermidine. What I believe we can say today is that spermidine shows protection against um, or improvement of our cardiovascular system. It improves our immune system as well as uh, protection of our cognitive abilities. Those are always the big three. And of course, the research into expanding uh, lifespan is also central. In animal studies, for example, we can already see that mice live up to 25% longer when they have spermidine supplementation. And remember, remember that I said our own spermidine levels decline by age. Mm -hmm. there, there's a groundbreaking study conducted in one of the blue zones, um, places where a lot of people turn 100 years old. The scientists looked at the blood levels of those old citizens, and they discovered that they are full with spermidine. They have basically spermidine levels like young people like, like me. And that's, that's quite fascinating. So I guess to sum it up, um, I believe spermidine can and will change all our lives. Only last year, the University of Amsterdam published a study on the most promising longevity substances. And spermidine was in the top three. Mm 